Hey, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. I'm here with Amina Albayadi, and she is the head of business development from Medical Chain, which is a blockchain company that's just about to launch here um, in the UK. Is that right? Yes. All right, very cool. So I wanted to pick your brain about blockchain because it's having a little bit of a difficult year this year, it seems like. Um, Last year, mostly people were very hyped up about it, and then it's like interest kind of fell off because there was difficulty finding a good application. So, I guess talk to me about um, what your thoughts are as far as how like different applications are being built on blockchain in healthcare, and what, what you're seeing from your perspective. First of all, thank you very much for coming here and chatting to me today. So, blockchain, there was a lot of hype last year, like you said, especially with Bitcoin going up so much in price, um, and everyone kind of wants to get on the bandwagon. But now that everything's calmed down, it's good to kind of see where the real companies are that want to make the investment. There's loads of really brilliant companies trying to be innovative with blockchain. and. The use of blockchain here is that it's very good to protect patients' data, to be able to allow them access to it in a very user-friendly way, wherever they are around the world, and it allows for a lot of innovation, a lot of scope for flexibility, and that's the key here that we're looking for, is something that is safe and secure, efficient and effective for the patients. I think a lot of people miss that point, that it's like this is a platform for doing other things on, and so you guys have developed with Medical Chain a way for patients to store their data. So tell me a little bit about what you guys have built. So we're building, uh, and it'll be it'll go live in March in the next year, but we are building a electronic healthcare platform for the patients and their clinicians to be able to access the information in real time, knowing that that data can't be corrupted or edited incorrectly or ever be lost. It can't be stolen. Um, and so it means that it's very robust and it means that you can trust it. And if you can trust the information, you can make the right decisions for both the patient and, and the clinician can feel safe that they're making the right decision for their patient. So in the U.S., one of the big issues is that like a lot of times we don't have access to our medical data or it's very difficult to get it electronically. Does that same issue exist here in the U.K. with the NHS or is it like this is going to be an easy thing to implement for you guys? So nothing in healthcare is easy. <laughs> well, good answer. <laughs> um, it, it, the U.K. is very similar. Although we have a national health service that encompasses all our healthcare, the company actually works very fragmented, like in the US, and each clinic and each department will work separately, and they do not speak to each other at all. What we're hoping is we'll be act as an umbrella to allow that communication, not only between the doctors and the clinics, but also with the patient and keep the patient in the loop, rather than, at the moment, they're always in the dark. They're the last person to know what's going on in their health, and we want to bring them right to the forefront and say, be part of the conversation right from the beginning. Do you think that patients here are ready for that responsibility? Definitely. With the, the research that's been out there over the last couple of years, patients are craving more knowledge, more understanding and more input. I mean, most of my patients that come and see me are already equipped with their Google printout. They've done their research. They want to be empowered with knowledge. And that the Google search is brilliant, but it's not bespoke to that patient. And what we're trying to do is just make it a little bit more bespoke so the patient researches their own data better. And it's more empowered. Therefore, their decision is about them, not about just the general population. And then how has the reaction been to, I guess, the partners that you're trying to work with? So I know you're launching in March with this, so I'm sure you're in negotiations with people to try to get the data to pull in and then also trying to recruit patients. Do you find, like, what are some of the challenges that you're encountering just communicating what it is that you're trying to do? And, like, how, how much do you stumble upon having to explain what blockchain is or do you just avoid the, the topic altogether? Um, it depends on who your audience is. Right. Uh, I'm a doctor by background, so I avoid a lot of the technical conversation anyway because I find it very difficult. Um, but the premise is that the blockchain is there for the security of the information, which is very, very important. Your data is 10 times more important than your credit card details, for example. So we need to really be careful about protecting that. But you asked about the difficulties that we're having at the moment. And the main difficulties is collaborating with other companies and to kind of... What kind of companies? So the companies that hold the patient's data at the moment. Okay. And these companies do great jobs in how they order that information, how that information can be utilised for research projects. And we... We are trying to make it clear that we are not here to take their place, that their job is vital. We can't replace them, but we want to work in collaboration, having an open standard that we all agree to. This is the right way to, to move data around in a safe way and then work together so that we can get the best for our patients and for our healthcare so it's sustainable for the future. So as you're rolling out, I'm curious a little bit about medical chain. Like, how how is your business model around this? Like, who's paying for for this application? Like, where is how is the how is the money going to come in to to feed the coffers of medical chain? Sure. So the actual medical chain electronic healthcare platform, which is where your information will be held, that's completely for free for all patients around the world okay. to be able to access our first application, which is myclinic.com. That's again free for the patient. We'll be taking 
our financial cut from the service providers by providing them with a more efficient and effective and productive a resource so they ha they can kind of cut out the middlemen that's where we'll be making our income to protect the patients and how are you guys working with like electronic medical record companies then or is that the, the are those some of the companies that you're having difficulty interfacing with they, there are difficulties interfacing not because of their lack of working with us but because it is a very complex system and they want to be sure that we are doing all our our kind of data filing in the correct way and it's a new concept so there is a lot of collaboration a lot of negotiation that has to take place but we're all moving in the right direction and in the UK our Minister of Health Matt, Matt Hancock is moving forward with those ideas so that's very supportive for us. Good. And now do you guys are you piloting anywhere like how are you are you currently executing on this I mean you're launching in March but how are you doing this right now? Yes yeah, so we're piloting myclinic.com in South West London in a practice called the Groves Medical Practice which encompasses four large practices and 30,000 patients and we're trialing our telemedicine portal just to, to test our blockchain out and in March the full management tool will come out. Okay, very cool. So exciting. Um, so uh, last thing I wanted to ask you was just a little bit about medical chains. So you guys are a startup company. You're based here in the UK. How many people are you? What do you give me a little bit of a, a window into what the company is like? Um, how many people? How long ago were you founded? Um, are you guys raising any money right now? What are you doing? So we, we started about uh, this time last year. Um, the CEO is uh, Dr. Abdullah Al Biat, who's actually my brother, um, and the co-founder is Mohammed Tayyib, and he's an entrepreneur. And they raised a lot of their money through the ICO which completed last year. We raised $24 million at the time in uh, cryptocurrency, which obviously gave us a good platform to start getting our developers to move very fast on this. Um, we're a team of 24 uh, developers and doctors. There are three doctors on the team. Um, and so we're hoping that we can always collaborate with clinicians, physiotherapists, allied health professionals, politicians, the media, because that's you're very vital to us to get that message across. And hopefully together we can all collaborate for the same end goal. I love that you guys are like a blockchain healthcare company that was funded by a blockchain ICO. Like that is so cool. <laughs> yeah, true to the blockchain. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. And like, so for everybody out there who's listening and watching, um, we need to see a, a use case in blockchain because that's been the, the critique all along. It's like, oh, well, where's the use case? And you guys are not quite there yet, but it sounds like in March we'll have to keep our eye out and see how your launch goes. Yes, please. Keep following us on our community. Watch the space and hopefully you'll see something lovely in March. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to talk to you here about this. I'm Jessica. Damasa with WTF Health here at Giant Health. Thanks for joining us.